Hello, and welcome to Spacewood Histories, a channel dedicated to telling the history of space exploration. My name is Erin, and today we're looking at three forgotten Skylab proposals, the Skylab B station, the Skylab rescue mission, and the Skylab reboost mission. Skylab was the United States' first crewed space station and orbited the Earth from 1973 to 1979. From 1973 to 1974, it was visited by three crews of three astronauts for increasing durations. Skylab 2 for 28 days, Skylab 3 for 59 days, and Skylab 4 for 84 days. Major operations of the space station included an orbital workshop, Earth and solar observation, and life science experiments. Though the single Skylab remained in orbit during the program's duration, its sister station, Skylab B, was constructed and housed back on Earth. McDonnell Douglas constructed two space stations for the Apollo Applications Program, which later became Skylab. There were multiple ideas for how to use the second Skylab station, each more advanced than the one in space. In May 1972, President Richard Nixon and Soviet Premier Alexei Kosygin signed the Space Cooperation Agreement, from which the Apollo-Soyuz test project was conceived. McDonnell Douglas proposed creating a large space station by combining Skylab with the Soviet space station Salyut. The large station would have been able to accommodate both the Apollo and the Soyuz crewed spacecraft and would have been the first evolutionary step in the eventual International Space Station program. In mid-1976, McDonnell proposed a 140-day Skylab Salyut mission to be carried out by multiple concurrent crews of three American astronauts and three Soviet cosmonauts. Skylab orbited at an altitude of 270 miles, with an inclination of 50 degrees. While the multiple Salyut stations orbited at different altitudes, they each had an orbital inclination of 51.6 degrees. Skylab Salyut would have met in the middle and operated at an altitude of 270 miles with an inclination of 51.6 degrees. Skylab and Salyut also used different gases and atmospheric pressures for life support, so either an airlock or a shared, unique atmosphere would be needed. Using an airlock would also require the crew to rebreathe, or purge nitrogen from the body by breathing pure oxygen, before entering the other country's module. After the Apollo-Soyuz test project brought about the end of the space race in July 1975, NASA focused more intensely on developing the space shuttle, which was due to enter service in 1979, while the Soviet space program pioneered long-duration spaceflight with Salyut. Quick side tangent while we're talking about Salyut. In 1974, NASA also looked into a potential docking between Salyut and the space shuttle. By 1977, Salyut 6 was already in orbit, so a new station would have launched with an aft docking port for the Soyuz, in addition to the standard forward port to service the orbiter. Unfortunately, delays in the shuttle program and worsening relations between the U.S. and USSR in the late 1970s killed the project. Skylab Rescue was a standby rescue mission part of a contingency plan for the space station. Its unique feature was a modified Apollo command module that could be launched with a crew of two and returned with a crew of five. Plans for equipping a command service module for space rescue dates back to late 1965, when technicians at North American Rockwell, the manufacturers of the Apollo spacecraft, conceived a rescue mission for astronauts trapped in lunar orbit. Following the release of the 1969 movie Marooned, in which a three-man crew in their Apollo craft is stranded in Earth orbit following their stay on a space station, the company revised the original plan, and it was approved by NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in 1972. The closest Skylab rescue ever came to fruition was during Skylab 3 in 1973. Soon after launch, the CSM developed problems with its reaction control system thrusters, called quads. Each service module has four quads. Two of the four quads were shut down due to leaking once the crew had arrived safely to Skylab. However, if the service propulsion system fuel was contaminated, the spacecraft might not be able to deorbit and return to Earth. With that risk in mind, NASA considered bringing the crew home immediately. 
but they were safe on Skylab and rescue flight plans existed, so the mission continued. Meanwhile, the Saturn 1B rocket AS-208 and the CSM-119 spacecraft were mated and rolled out to Launch Complex 39B for launch. The crew for this rescue mission was Vance Brand and Don Lind, the backup commander and pilot for Skylabs 3 and 4. They used simulators to test undocking from Skylab and re-entering Earth's atmosphere using only two quads instead of the usual four. It was Lynn's responsibility to choose what would be brought back with the crew from the station, since there was limited room in the cockpit, the most important of which was the film from the Apollo Telescope Mount, a solar observatory. Cutting corners, the mission would not be ready to launch until September 10th, more than a month after the second quad malfunctioned. NASA canceled the rescue mission after it determined the failed quads would not cripple the CSM and the fuel was not contaminated. Brand and Lind supported the conclusion that re-entry with the failed quads was safe. In fact, Brand is said to have joked that he and Lind were, quote, very efficient but perfectly stupid because we have literally worked ourselves out of the mission. Skylab 3 returned home as scheduled after completing its 59-day mission. Brand and Lind continued to work on their backup roles for Skylab 4 as well as train for a possible rescue mission. Spacecraft CSM-119 was mated with the AS-209 rocket, but was never rolled out to the pad for launch. There were also plans for a 20-day Skylab 5 flight with Brand, Lind, and backup science pilot Bill Lenore, but when Skylab 4 was extended from 59 to 84 days, the mission was no longer needed. Vance Brand flew on Apollo Soyuz in 1975 and commanded three space shuttle missions. STS-5 Columbia in 1982, STS-41B Challenger in 1984, and STS-35 Columbia in 1990. Bill Lenore's only flight was STS-5, the first mission Brand commanded. Don Lin's only trip into space was on board STS-51B Challenger in 1985. By the late 1970s, Skylab was abandoned and losing altitude. Since the station had no way to reboost itself, NASA ordered the construction of the Teleoperator Retrieval System, an unmanned robotic space tug developed for satellite boosting and deorbiting in October 1977. The TRS would have been launched by the space shuttle to dock with Skylab and either boost it into a higher orbit and extended service life, or deorbit it into the ocean. The mission would have been crewed by Fred Hayes, veteran of the Apollo 13 lunar mission and the Space Shuttle Enterprise approach and landing tests, and Jack Lausma, veteran of Skylab 3. While NASA had plenty of money to develop the TRS, it did not have plenty of time. NASA anticipated the Space Shuttle to complete its maiden flight in 1979 and Skylab to re-enter in the early 1980s. However, with delays with STS-1, the first shuttle mission, the vehicle would not make its first trip to space until April 1981. By 1979, Skylab's orbit was decaying too rapidly to wait at least two years for a reboost. NASA canceled the development of the Teleoperator Retrieval System and Hayes and Lausma's deployment mission, though Martin Marietta, the manufacturers of the Titan rocket family, offered to fly the TRS on a Titan III rocket. On July 11, 1979, Skylab deorbited and re-entered over the Indian Ocean in Australia. After Skylab and the Apollo Soyuz test project ended, remaining hardware was donated to museums across the country. This hardware included two complete Saturn V rockets, three Saturn 1B rockets, Skylab B, three command surface modules, and two lunar modules not including the lunar module test articles. AS-209, the last remaining flight-configured Saturn 1B rocket, is on display in the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex's rocket garden, lying on its side. CSM-119 is at KSE's Apollo Saturn V Center, but the unique five-seat rescue configuration has been removed. Thanks for watching, and be sure to leave a like and a comment on this video. My Forgotten Skylab web article is linked in the description below, and if you want more space history, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.